Well, we greet everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, it is week four in the lockdown. And we, again, would like to share God's word with the believers uh, to encourage the hearts of the believers. We have been thinking much of the shepherd ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we read this lovely portion of scripture, you're able to link the last three messages and uh, the thoughts about the shepherd ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ um, as we read and uh, discuss and think somewhat of the Lord Jesus Christ and his disciples on this occasion. You will note whilst we read this portion that there was one who led them and one who was with them. His divine presence was with them. And of course, one who preserved them in a time of difficulty and then ultimately one who delivered them. So would you turn with me to Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, and we are going to pick up the reading uh, at verse number 35. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 35 through to 41, and then chapter 5, verses 1. Chapter 4, verse 35. And the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it? that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And the Lord always blesses the public reading of his word. Well, certainly an exciting portion of Scripture. And we would like to divide this portion into four sections under four headings and speak with you today somewhat, firstly, of the direction that these disciples received. We read in verse number 35, He saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Then we want to look not only of the directions they received, but we want to look at the difficulties they encountered. In verse 37 we read, And there arose a great storm of wind, a storm of adversity, the, difficulty, the difficulties they encountered. Then thirdly, we want to look at the distress they expressed. Verse 38 we read, Carest thou not that we perish? They were distressed. Their souls were distressed. And then fourthly, we want to look at the deliverance they experienced. Verse 39 says, He arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And there was a great calm. The directions they received. The, difficult, the difficulties they encountered, the distress they expressed, the deliverance they experienced, the story indeed that we read of, the true account found in Mark's Gospel, chapter number 4. You'll notice that these disciples, um, whilst they were heading on this journey, you'll find that they were directed to take this journey by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. 
And you know, as believers, we are on a journey, isn't it? Life's journey, a voyage. We are traveling across the sea of life. A journey we take. And our lives are lived uh, under the direction of God's word. The psalmist says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. The proverb writer says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And so these disciples, being directed by the Lord Jesus Christ, the directions that they received, they were to go to the other side of the lake. And no doubt, these disciples were obedient to God's word. And immediately they went. And as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to be obedient to God's word. For the believer himself is one who lives a life of obedience. The greatest point of blessing in your life and my life comes at the point of obedience. When we were obedient to the call of the gospel, we were saved. Obedient as far as water, water baptism is concerned. And so we live a life of obedience to the word of God. And we have God's word to direct us and to guide us. And of course, it is our responsibility to be obedient to God's word, the direction that they received. But of course, we read in verse 37 that there was difficulties that they encountered. Yes, these men were obedient to the direction given, the instructions given by the Lord Jesus Christ. But we read in verse 37 that there arose a great storm of wind. Yea, the question is asked, what had they done wrong? And oftentimes when difficulties arrive and storms uh, we have to face in life, well, we, we question, well, what have we done wrong? And indeed, sometimes it is true that we experience difficulties because of disobedience. We think of Jonah, one who was disobedient to the call and to God's word. And he indeed ex he experienced a great storm in his life. But here, these disciples, they were in the right place. At the right time. Heading to the, to, 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 in the right direction. But we read in verse 37. That whilst they were at the right place, the right time, in obedience to God's word, there arose a great storm of wind. You know, brethren and sisters, the Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples so long ago, so long ago, that in the world he shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. You know, the Christian life is not a bed of roses. Difficulties come, trials come, tribulation comes. And we indeed do experience difficulties just as these disciples experienced difficulties. They were at the right place. And yet, a great storm arose. You will recognize the suddenness of the storm and you know difficulties come without warning unexpected you'll notice not only the suddenness of the storm but the seriousness of the storm we read there that it was a great storm the enormity of it this is the storm was extreme the suddenness the seriousness a great storm. We read there somewhat of the severity of the storm. The waves beat into the sh ship so that the ship was full. Their lives were at jeopardy. The ship to sink. And you know, in our lives and experience, difficulties come very suddenly. And they're very serious. And they're very severe. And of course... What is our reaction going to be when these difficulties come? The psalmist said, what time I am afraid, I will trust in him. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, be of good cheer, I have overcome 
the world. Isn't it wonderful to know that these are these disciples? Yes, they were in the right place. Yes, they were there at the right time. Yes, they were heading in the right direction. But of course, it's wonderful to know that in this time of difficulty and trial and test, there was one who was with him, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And of course, in this time of distress, what were their reactions going to be? What were they going to do? We read there somewhat of the distress that they expressed. Verse 38. They awoke the master. Well, very sadly, they said to him, Carest thou not that we perish? Our oh, brethren and sisters, at times when we indeed distress, well, perhaps we say the wrong things. The Lord Jesus Christ does care. He does understand. He knows about our troubles. What distress, distress they expressed. They thought they would, they would perish. You know, in Psalm 25, we read, The troubles of my heart are enlarged, the psalmist says. Oh, bring me out of distress. And you know, brothers and sisters, sometimes in life, the difficulties of life, and the distresses of life, and the trials of life, brings us into great depression and distress. The psalmist said again, my soul is cast down within me. Well, it's wonderful to read that these disciples, they went to the right person. They went to none other than the Lord Jesus Christ, the Christ of God. Yea, in this chapter, you know, we read somewhat of the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ as he deals with the storm. And indeed, the one who is the eternal Son of God, the one who upholds the worlds in his hand, they went to the right person. And we are enjoined in the scriptures that we are able to call upon the name of the Lord. We are able to come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in every time of need. The psalmist, of course, says, In my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. Another verse says, Not only did he hear, but he, he saves me. He delivered me. He set me in a large place. It's wonderful to know that in times of great distress and trial, times of enormous difficulty we're able to take it to the Lord in prayer but then of course they took it to the right person and we're going to look at the deliverance that they experienced verse 39 says I love this they went of course to the master the one who indeed was with them in this time of distress the one who had everything under control, he was asleep. The one who knew the end from the beginning. And of course he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. Peace, be still. What a change the Lord Jesus Christ brought on that occasion. We read early on that it was a great storm, the enormity of it, the seriousness of it, the suddenness of it. But isn't it wonderful to read here in, the, in verse 39, that great storm, we read the of a great calm as a result of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what a great calm this must have been to the hearts of these disciples. They were surprised. They were shocked. And they said in that last verse, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the waves obey him? Our brethren and sisters, they had experienced the shepherd ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who led them he gave them instructions in the way that they should go. 
the one who not only led them, the one who went with them, they enjoyed his divine presence with them. And then the one who preserved them in the storm and ultimately delivered them. And so these disciples, well, the Lord said to them on the circuit, why are ye so fearful? And how is it that ye have no faith? And in times of great trial and testing and difficulty, and we are going through such times. Difficulty, trials as far as work and business and as concerned trials in families. But let us learn from this experience of the disciples. Let us not be fearful. Let us continue to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And be able to say with the hymn writer, I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine for its skies may turn to grey. I don't worry all the future. For I know what Jesus said, and today I'll walk beside him, for he knows what lies ahead. I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty. But the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me. And the path that be my portion may be through the flame or flood, but his presence goes before me. And I'm covered with his blood. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. I say again with the disciples so long ago. What manner of man is this? That even the wind and the waves obey him. A great storm. We're experiencing a great storm in our lives, and yet the one who saved us by his grace, he is the one who's able to bring a great calm. And indeed, he doesn't take us out of the storm, but he goes with us through the storm. The psalmist says, though I walk through the valley, valley overshadowed by death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He goes with us. He doesn't remove us from the storm. And through it all, our character and our faith is built. We're able to say, I've learned to trust in Jesus. And I've learned to trust in God. We trust God to bless these few short remarks as a word of encouragement to you for his own name's sake. Amen.